ESPN presents the semifinals of the Dodge NIT. Game one matches the Paul and St. John's. Joey Myers Club advanced after outscrapping NC State Friday at the Rosemont Horizon, getting clutch performances from forwards David Booth and Kevin Holland. The Blue Demons are deep, big, and very physical. St. John's was concerned about losing top scorer and rebounder Jason Williams, but sophomore Malik Seeley picked up the slack, leading the Redmen to victories at home over NC A&T and Houston. In Game 2, Kansas faces top-ranked UNLV. Mark Randall torched LSU for 26 points on 12 of 15 shooting, and the Jayhawks put on a passing clinic in upsetting the second-ranked Tigers. UNLV has lived up to their top billing so far. The run and rev sprinted past Loyola Marymount and blew out California at the Thomas and Mack Center. Up next, it's DePaul, St. John, Kansas, and UNLV. Welcome to New York City, New York, the world's most famous city, and to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous sports arena, where we'll tip it off tonight in the first of two in the semifinals of the Dodge NIT, St. John's and DePaul. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Saunders, along with Dick Vitale. St. John's trying to become the first team to ever win back-to-back -back NITs in the same year. They won the postseason. Now this is the preseason, and they have a boost because Boo Harvey is back. Well, Boo Harvey's the great player out of high school who didn't get a chance to play last year, academically ineligible. But they're excited about Harvey because they've created a fast-paced game, and he's made to order for the running game. He's an innovator, a creator. He really likes to push the ball up the floor. But he has a little help up front as well. Harvey had 21 points in his debut against Houston. Don't forget one thing, John. The NIT right now, little home cooking. St. John's is here and DePaul is here, and they both played at home the first two games. Certainly can't hurt St. John's to play in front of Madison Square Garden. Now, Jason Williams is out. He's the outstanding scorer for St. John's, but this sophomore, Malik Seeley, oh so smooth. I get excited when I talk about Seeley. I think he's going to be an outstanding player. Remember, he's only a sophomore, and he's a kid that's a tremendous leaper. He has great quickness. He's a slasher. He's improved his shooting touch. He's been brilliant in their first two wins. They're expecting him to be a dominant baseline player. On the other side, Joey Meyer, his team off to a good start as well. They don't have as many stars as St. John's, but that bench is loaded, loaded all the way from top to bottom. Joey Meyer says, we're so deep, I don't know who to start, but we have nobody really coming to the front. However, they're 2-0. They won both games at home where they're difficult to beat at the Rosemont Horizon, but they have a very deep club. Look at the numbers right here, the number of block shots, what the bench has accounted for in terms of points. They've been getting great, great play off the bench from so many athletes. Very deep team, but they're looking for a star. When they go to a man who might be their star of the future, David Booth. Well, David Booth has great score and potential. He can score a big. Had a big game against Jimmy Valvano's North Carolina State team. He is definitely a potential great scorer. But another guy that's been brilliant off the bench, Stephen Howard. I'll tell you, he may not start, but when the game is on the line, Bet on it, Mr. Howard will be on the floor. Joey Meyer has never lost at Madison Square Garden. A perfect 3-0. Back with the starting line. right now. Let's go to Chris Fowler. Okay, thank you, Jim. Welcome back to Madison Square Gardens. We're about to tip it off here in the semifinals of the Dodge NIT. The first game, DePaul and St. John's. Right now for your starting lineups, let's go to Mike Walazinski. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. Tonight, it's the semifinals of the Dodge Preseason National Invitation Tournament. And in the first game, it'll be the Blue Demons of DePaul against the Redmen of St. John's. Here are the starting lineups. First for St. John's. At the guards, number three, Boo Harvey. And number 12, Jason Buchanan. At the forwards, number 21, Malik Seeley. And number 33, Billy Singleton.
The center is number 41, Robert Werdan. And the head coach of the Redmen, Luke Karnaseka. And now for the Blue Demons, at the guards, number 10, B.J. Tyler. And number 20, Melvon Foster. At the forwards, number 15, Kevin Holland. And number 30, David Booth. The center is number 44, James Hanby. The head coach of the Blue Demons, Joey Meyer. The officials are Don Shea, Ron Foxcroft, and Rusty Herring. Joey Meyer and Lou Carnesecca about to tip it off. Two coaches with among the best winning records of active coaches in the NCAA. Back with St. John's and DePaul in a moment. First of two semifinals here. Let's take a look at our game notes for St. John's. Of course, both these teams have perfect records. NCAA team and, and Houston to get here. They're looking for their 1400th win. And Ohio State and NC State went down under Joey Meyer to get here to Madison Square Garden. We're about to tip it off. Robert Ordan face up against Kevin Holland. Holland is a scoring machine. Dick. Holland's a real aggressive player, John. Very active player. Set out last year, had a back injury. St. John's controls the tip. And it's like having two point guards back there when you have Boo Harvey and Jason Buchanan because Buchanan definitely handled the point well last year. Dishes inside to where Dan misses the shot. B.J. Tyler runs the point to start the game for the ball. Yeah, an outstanding game in his first game as a collegian against Ohio State. Holland trying to make the move, but that's a turnover. Go, go to a little two-man game trying to get the entry down to Holland, who's a big, strong post player. Here comes the full court pressure. Well, this is what you look for from DePaul. They want their team running at all times. Boo Harvey beats it, puts the shot up, but it won't fall. And St. John's a little cold to start. I think they'll have a very difficult time trying to pressure St. John's with Harvey. We talked about Holland and what a good post player he is. He also showed some touch in the game I watched him against. North Carolina State tipped up by Holland. It won't go. And Malik Seeley comes down with a rebound. Seeley's a very quick rebounder. He has that quick bounce off the floor. I want to see this combination that you alluded to, Buchanan and Harvey. They say Buchanan can't score. I don't know if that is really going to be their most effective combo. Well, and they have a youngster by the name of Chuck Sproling off the bench who played the two guard in game number one because Boo Harvey could not play, so Buchanan ran the point. And Sproling can really light it up when he gets hot. Buchanan drives the baseline out to Wardan for the first two of the game. He's the key player for this basketball team. If Wardan can finally come around and be a dominant inside player, he has that kind of potential to be an outstanding post player. He has really been slow in terms of coming around. As a freshman, played a lot, but never became the player they anticipated out of high school. B.J. Tyler trying to work on Boo Harvey. Just went out to Holland. Tyler's got to show whether or not he can shoot that J so that he can play off. See how hard he's playing off him right now? David Booth misses the shot. It's long, but a big rebound by Holland, but it's strict reap by Buchanan. Melvon Foster with the shot. He's fouled as he let it go. Jason Buchanan picks up the first foul of the game. Jason came out of Nottingham High School in Syracuse. He was a big scorer on a high school level. Joey Meyer really feels that Melvon Foster can play either the number one guard slot or the number two as he checks with his coaching staff. Well, you have to wonder, Dick, as far as St. John's is concerned, players like Wardan, Seely, and Buchanan, who got so much playing time in their first year, if it says sophomore on the guard and on the game notes, but they really have more experience than that. They're very experienced. You know, I think sometimes as he kissed the glass, that looked like your free throw, baby. <laughs> that was nothing but glass. I'll tell you one thing. You're right. Uh, they are freshmen in terms of coming in here. Now they're southwest, but they had a whole year of experience last year as well. 
Billy Singleton, who's had a couple of good games coming in. He came off the bench for St. John's last year, but has looked very strong in the early going. He's getting a lot of PT with Jason Williams out. And he's trying to prove it and give him quality minutes. Boo Harvey into Singleton. Puts the move on, but has to change his shot. And Booth hauls down the rebound, and here comes the ball. Tyler pulls up and lets it fly, but it's long. Now here's where Harvey excels in the up-tempo game. Malik Sealy. Harvey says, I like it. Louis letting us use the whole court. We're no longer just playing that half-court offense. Who Harvey said before the start of the season, he said, watch St. John's this year. We will run. I don't think Louis was around when he said that. <laughs> Hall into the top of the key. They run a lot of screen downs to pop people out. You got to get over the top of that screen. He wanted a walking violation, Carter Sucker. Ball working it around. It's Melvon Foster in the paint with a nice move. That's the athletic Melvon ability Foster. we were talking about. Whirling. There's the trap. Reverse pass against the trap. That's another good way of breaking it. Throw right over the top of the trap. Now, can he shoot it? That's the big question mark. Wide open, and he misses that shot. The foul underneath where Dan was reaching for the rebound. James Hamby gets called for the foul, but as you said, can Jason Buchanan shoot if he's going to play the two guard? There's the jumper we're watching coming over the top. Little bump. Shea with the call. Dan wants the ball and gets it. Working on Hamby, and Hamby picks up his second straight foul. James Hamby with two fouls in a row, but Joey Meyer Hamby doesn't get too concerned because he's so deep on the bench as we alluded to in the open. James Hamby starts the game. He gives him some defensive presence. He can block shots for Joey Meyer, but Joey knows that he's going to get Steve Howard on the floor. Howard is one of their most productive people. We're Dan not even close to putting that one. Played at a great high school program. Archbishop Malloy had to herald it. Kenny Anderson is ready to break loose down at Georgia Tech, and he will be the best pure freshman in the nation. When he's sitting on the bench with a broken bone in his foot, you can understand what the problem is. 22-18, St. John's trails by four. Let's see the kind of offense they run. Now he goes away. There's a backdoor cut for the wing. Foster with a nice save. No basket. Foul is called underneath before Howard got off the shot. See, I think the pool's best combination of big people as we look at where they But I when Holland and when Howard are on the floor together, the two bankers, they don't have a true center, but they're very difficult to play down in those boxes. Dr. Murphy did not manage to save it. Looked like he came up with a nice save, but must have stepped on the out-of-bounds line, and he turns it over. Good call by Don Shea from the Atlantic 10 Conference. They're going to have some good teams in the Atlantic 10 this year. You watch Rutgers. Bobby Wenzel could be one of the hot, hot players as Werdan goes to the... Let's look at Joey Meyer. Rodan goes to the bench, and Sean Muto comes into the game. He's a strong player, takes space inside from out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. He's not going to give you a lot of points, but he'll give you something on defense. Ball comes away the ball. Foster pushing it, and he double dribbled. Yeah, he definitely double dribbled. Rusty Herring right on a call. Number 12, Jason Buchanan back in for the Red Men replacing David King. Jason Buchanan comes back into the game, and Kane, the freshman, goes to the bench. They fake it easily this time as Billy Singleton comes away with the ball. Singleton's an old-school player, you know. He doesn't have the great jumping ability and quickness, but he's fundamentally a player that knows how to play the game. Now, this is Buchanan's true position, a point guard slot. Chucky scrolling in the game. Buchanan will play the point. Singleton took steps. No question about it as he tried to fake his man. He took a little two-step there. Did a little cha-cha-cha. St. John's has now turned the ball over ten times in the game. We got five minutes left in the first half, and they're down by four. Melvon Foster. Chucky Murphy. Trying to get some good execution out of their passing game. Howard works on Muto. Gets fouled. Can't get the shot to go. 
Howard from out of Dallas, Texas. He's an outstanding student. In fact, he was the recipient prior to the game. Had his mom and dad here. They were very proud as he received an award as the outstanding student athlete of the Dodge NIT. This great point is up around 3.6, which is saying something when you're calling carrying the full load and you're playing basketball as well. Almost as good as my grade point. I said it the other night. Heck, I had one as good as that. Yeah, 1.0, 4.0. 1.0 is a freshman. You were totaling it for the three years. That's right. 1.0 is a south. Howard had a big game off the bench against Ohio State. Howard gives DePaul a six-point lead over the Redmond. 24-18 with 4.44 left here in the first half. That's a dangerous pass. A bad one as well as Howard picks it off. He telegraphed that, baby. There are three things you want to do against that kind of pressure. One, reverse the ball. Two, hit a postman or three throw to a diagonal man. They can't check all three areas. Scrolling pushes it up to Buchanan. As for one, St. John's coming away with a turnover. Louis Cornisecca going in his 22nd year, and every year they've been to a postseason party. An amazing record. Foul away from the ball will be called on Kevin Holland, number 15, as he was working with Billy Singleton. That's his second of the game. Last year in a matchup, St. John's beat them over at the Rosemont Horizon. There's the edge. We're going to see a little contact down low. There's the contact on Singleton. Holland says, who, me? They're trying to clean up post action early, sending a message out. We're not going to tolerate guys trying to beat up on people down in the low post. So Billy Singleton goes to the line, tries to get St. John's a little closer, and he does. St. John's has an excellent recruit coming in next year by the name of Lee Green. Outstanding guard from out of an academy up in uh, Connecticut, but he's really from out of New York City. We talked about the bench before the game and how strong DePaul's bench is. They have 11 points off the bench. St. John's has just two at this point. But it's just a four-point game. DePaul with the lead. Chucky Murphy's been handling most of the points. It's about the five-minute mark of the first half. Melvon Foster on Singleton over top and hits it. One of the toughest screens to defend. They just run a simple screen from the wing down to the boxes. And players, I don't know why, but they get beat on that so often. They don't get over the top, don't communicate. See, here's the part of the game that Luke Karnasek has been a little bit criticized by some of the media for playing a half-court patient game with a lot of creators. Oh, I got a goaltend in there. Holland gets called for the goaltend. Seeley put it up with the glass, and he just went for it. They get the ball down inside. Now, watch the quick jumper. There's the help side coming over. Definitely goaltending. You know, it's amazing. I don't know how they can criticize Corner Second. When you look at his numbers, they're amazing. And consistency, and he's a great ambassador for college basketball. He just wins. There's a shot from the corner. They won't go. And St. John's pulls down the rebound. Down by four. Chuck Sprawling tries to work his way around Foster, but there's no room. He dishes it back out to Buchanan. Sprawling hasn't really tried a shot from out there yet. Well, Foster's playing him really tough right now, trying to deny him the ball. They switched, they got him open, they missed him. Malik Seeley did not see Chucky Sprawling work free. Buchanan decides to take the shot, no go, and Melvon Foster comes up with a loose ball. From the corner, it's Howard, the lefty, and he pumps that one down. He squares his body really well when he catches the ball. He squares. He has the good release. There's the trap trying to create tempo. St. John's going to push it back out, show some patience. Muto with a chance to take the shot, and he does. Muto says, no patience. I'm going right to the goal. There's an open lane, and he's taking it to the basket. Put it on the floor once, and then just let it go with a little right-hand flip. This is a typical St. John's score, basically. Keep the game around where it's going to be in the 60s. Howard won't go, and Muto's there for the rebound. Muto giving him some good QT, some quality time off the bench. Buchanan nearly lost the handle. Singleton in the paint. Can't get it, and here comes the ball the other way. Holland, the big guy, handling the ball like a guard. He should have found a guard and went without it. Murphy hid. Should have came, popped out, got the ball, and tried to find Howland. Now one, they run a little stack, one, two, two. 
Tipped out of bounds by Sproling. It'll still be DePaul ball. Stay with us. Plenty more basketball. It's a four-point game. 35 left, a four-point lead. Be sure to stay with us and join Chris Fowler. We'll have a feature on the St. John's Redmen, home at the Garden. And of course, Dick and I will have our first half recap. We have 133 left in the first half. I think both these teams are going to see a lot of zone defenses throughout the course of the year to negate their great athletic ability. They're trying to swing the ball side to side. They should try to deny that pass so you can't reverse the ball from side to side. So easy to coach here, John. Shecky Murphy lets it fly from the top of the key, and it's long. St. John's comes away with it. Buchanan pushes it up, thinks better of it, and pulls it back out. He scored big in high school when he played at Nottingham High over in Syracuse. Competition level a little different than here. And there's that little screen down, a curl move by Sealy. Malik Sealy stripped of the ball by Murphy again with the quick hands. Foster takes it up, loses the handle on it, but they say that Sprawling was the last to touch it. Murphy should have sprinted ahead of the basketball. He deflected it, but then he trailed the ball. There's no way in the world. See, here's the guy. Look at him right now. Now there's the deflection. Now there's no way in the world. Uh, we're way up ahead, but down a little bit earlier. There's the ball going out. He should have gotten ahead of the ball. He would have gotten it back, Murphy. A guy dribbling the ball should not be able to get to the court as quick as a guy without the dribble. Looked to me like Melvon Foster was the last to touch it. For those of you watching college basketball wondering what that quick number is going off on the right, well, in the NBA this year, they count down the last minute of halves and of quarters, of course, in tenths of a second. Well, last night, St. John, well, St. John's was represented by Mark Jackson, and the ball was represented by Mr. Strickland, and the crowd got all over Jackson. They wanted Strickland on the floor. Those two guys are battling for some PT, even though they're teammates. Howard, between three players, still gets it to go with the left hand. He'll play a lot more minutes coming off that bench than a lot of starters will. Six-point oh. lead as Muto trying to tip that one in. But the half will finish with DePaul leading it 30 to 24 over the host, St. John's Redmond, right now. We told you about halftime. Let's go to the man who'll bring it all to you. Chris Fowler standing by. Chris on the score clock. 30 to 24 is the score. We're going to come back with the second half in just a moment. This is the first of two games of the Dodge NIT semifinals. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. John Saunders along with Dick Vitale ready for the second half. The DePaul Blue Demons up 30-24. to 24. And let's take a look at who's doing the scoring for St. John's. Malik Seeley, he's the machine. I thought Wardan played really well when he was on the floor. He had that one big spurt for seven big points. Harvey's really been quiet with a deuce. I thought Harvey was going to break loose against that pressure. Booth, as we predicted, and Howard, as we predicted, we got to pat ourselves on the back because nobody else will. They each had eight points, and we thought they would be some of their scoring leaders. 50% of the points have come off the bench for DePaul, and you see their scoring is much more balanced than St. John's. Redmond will send their starting lineup. Scoring was a lot more balanced than having lunch today. $52 for a club sandwich and an apple juice, and I had a spring for the bill? I was going to say, I didn't mind because you picked up the tab. <laughs> Welcome to New York. Chucky Hello. Murphy will go against Boo Harvey once again. That was quite a matchup in the first half. See, they fight over the screen. Dan gets over that time, but gets caught up in the air. Stephen Howard follows up on his own rebound as Seeley was caught watching the play. You know he's going to get some quality time. Howard's one of their key players. There's that pressure. See, now the hesitation. He's got to go by it. Just like he did right there, baby. Just take it to the goal, New York City style. Little shake and bake, little rattle and roll. They were listening to you at halftime, Dick, as they break the press easily. And going with the two, Melvon Foster is rejected by Werdan, but follows it up. For some reason, I see a little hesitancy in Harvey. He, like, really wants to turn loose, but, like, says, maybe I'll sit next to the coach if I do. That's maybe. what's going Beautiful job breaking. See Murphy? He doesn't respect his jump shot. He's not even guarding him out on a perimeter. Dan tries to push it inside to Singleton, but it's knocked three, and DePaul comes away with it. Chuck Murphy with a little shaking and baking on his own. He's been a little bit more steady than B.J. Tyler, who has great ability but has a tendency to play a little bit flashy. Tyler played great in the first game against Ohio State, but 
was a little bit soft in the second game, and so that's why Chucky Murphy's starting to get more playing time early on this season. Harvey goes through the defense. Now they're going to try to reverse the ball, curl it to him. Buchanan decides, you're going to give me a little room, I'll let it go, but you got to knock those down. That's going to be the one ingredient that he's going to have to approve on because people are going to play him very soft. Stephen Howard with a move around where Dan, the finger roll, will not fall. Give it to Harvey. Oh, he missed Harvey. Finally spots his point guard on the other side and hits him, does Robert Wardan. See, Jason's going to get a lot of shots from the perimeter after the ball is out of his hands and goes through the defense. You're right, they're not giving Blue Harvey any respect there. They're back way off Blue Harvey. Jason Buchanan. Tipped in by Malik Sealy. Sealy goes to the offensive board from the weak side. No one blocks out. But again, you see the strategy of the ball, letting Buchanan shoot the ball. Howard works on Rodan, tries to find Foster, but sends it out of bounds. As I said earlier, John, as we look at Joey Meyer, we're going to see a lot of teams zone both these clubs. Still a six-point game. Chuck Sprolin checks into the game, and Jason Buchanan goes to the bench. Buchanan has thrown up a lot of bricks, and maybe they figure Sproling with his shooting touch, can get it going. Well, they didn't look as Brick City as John. Come on, now, that is your jumper. Yeah, you're all Brick City, but really, that's going to hurt your confidence. You miss two, and you go sit next to the coach, and then the coach says, you got to be confident, son. you got to shoot him with confidence. Billy Singleton with a nice move in the paint. Puts it on. Look at Buchanan, though, and, and Louis Carnesecca has his arm right around the youngster as he takes him off. Louis a master psychologist, but one thing the players know, he has great, great love for the game, love for St. John's, and he loves people. Oh, that's got to be a travel on Booth. Booth decided to get a running start on that one. The ball, the ball had a great team two years ago when they lined up with Strickland and Edwards in the backcourt, and Holland played across the front until last year when he had a back injury and had to sit the year out. They were 28 and three, John. Holland was a starter on that team. He isn't shooting the ball as much as I saw him shoot in the first two games either. They're asking him to play a different role in this game. They got to go to where Dan a little bit inside. He could score down in the boxes. Drew Harvey, Tom Murphy, then decides to dish, picks up the rebound behind the back. Singleton can't get it to fall, though. Malik Sealy's there for the rebound, and he's fouled. What a pass by Boo Harvey. Boo Harvey with great eyes, came out of Andrew Jackson High School. The greatest passer of all time came out of that high school. His name was Robert Cousy. This is a little Coos right here, number 14 in the Celtics, right around the back. Singleton. Well, Harvey says, Singleton, I needed the assist. Two shots. Looked like Howard might have got a hand on that ball as it started its downward arc towards the hoop. No goal pin called, and Malik Seely will go and try and add the points by the free throw route. What a classy kid Malik Seely is. I mean, he is really a student, an athlete, did a great job academically at St. Nicholas Palatine, where two years ago they were the number one team in the USA, according to the USA newspaper poll. James Hamby checks back into the game, and Stephen Howard will go to the bench. Hamby, a defensive player, big. Blocks some shots, not really an offensive threat. Sealy pulls the Redmond to within two. It's 34-32 to Paul with the lead. They led by six to start the second half. Very quiet crowd, not a lot of students. It's a half-court trap. He's trying to invite him in a trap. Ball is tipped away, but it still belongs to the ball. The best way in attacking that trap, John, is to go to a 2-1-2 set. Utilize your post guy to reverse the ball. Louis Cardaseca breaking out another sweater. Joey Meyer looking at the change in defenses. He's the only coach other than Freddie Schaus to go to the NCAAs in their first five years of coaching on the NCAA Division I level. And I'll tell you, with the team he has here, you may as well count it as sixth grade right now. Price pushes it inside to Holland. He misses the easy deuce. St. John's comes away with a chance to tie or take the lead. Harvey, though, stripped of the ball by Foster. Holland on the other end. Showtime. Hello. Holland missed one a little bit earlier, but he's not going to miss that one, baby. Up, up, and away. Not a three on nothing. He better not miss it. Harvey has a tendency at times, I think, to dribble the ball a little bit too high, and he exposes it for the defensive player. They've stripped him several times. Chucky Murphy's been at the, the end of most of it. When you get Melvon Foster out there, it's like having two point guards. Seeley 
for Singleton with his back turns, but gets called for the walk as he tried to put it up. It's 36-32. The Blue Demons have a four-point lead. Billy Singleton in the Redmond with some more. We'll see a little high. Well, he got a bad bounce there. You got the portable floor here. There's ice underneath. The ball bounces. They get it out to Holland, and the big fella is going to take it home. There he goes. Little showtime. He looks back. He says, I got myself an easy deuce right here. Good night. Almost looked like he was smiling as he took that one in. Price is back into the game. So is Hamby. They love to run their offensive sets from the wings, trying to get people on the boxes and exchanging. Howard working on Singleton. Murphy comes away with it. He's triple team, so he pushes it back out to Price. Price really struggling offensively. You can see him favoring that hand, but he's such a good athlete. What a tough competitor. Had wrist surgery, arthroscopic wrist surgery. Foster's loose on the wing, but that one is long. Hamby, though, in the paint, gets the rebound and throws it up with the left hand. Any kind of offense they can get out of Hamby would be such a plus. 7-1, known mainly as a defensive player. There's that trap again. See, now somebody posts up. That's exactly what you want to do. Well coached against it. Post somebody up. Reverse the ball. Singleton trying to work in on Howard. High off the glass, but way too high. Singleton, tr Singleton trying to back the guy down. What great tradition these two schools have. They have such a rich tradition in basketball success. You think of all the great players. The year 1985, the Final Four. Three Big East teams there. St. John's with Chris Mullen. Hey, look at Hamby. He said, that's for you, Vital. You said, I'm limited offensively. They don't get me to rock. The little jump hook. And it goes as it hits nothing but the twine. Malik Seeley down the other end will try and score quickly. Hamby with a good job. He really created the problem there defensively. Chucky Murphy working on... Malik Sealing will push it back out to Price now. The ball showing some patience. They have their biggest lead of the game at eight. There's the curl move. Lou Harvey off to the races with Foster on him. Does get the roll. That's how he was at San Jacinto Junior College under Ronnie Arrow, now coaching South Alabama. As Louis Cornesecca not only got him from that team, but Michael Porter. One of those stories could have been and should have been. Ala Lloyd Daniels and a host of others. Chris Washburn have never, ever made it. Melvon Foster was just hammered to the ground by Robert Wardan in the paint. Joey Meyer came flying off the bench and did get the call. That's his third for Wardan. And you may see Muto. Booth comes back into the game. Price goes to the bench. Trying to run a backdoor cut. And there it is. They try and get Foster. Blue Harvey will be called for the foul as he pushed Foster out of the way. They were trying to set him up for the backdoor cut. They were trying to get Harvey staring at the basketball. It's my foul. Look at Boo talking to the official. Third personal foul. I believe he's got to take him out for a moment. He has enough bench depth that he can this year at the backcourt slot. Last year, they did not have any bench depth at all when you talked about their backcourt. Louie takes a timeout, so will we. 40-34. Did you hear the one about the four lumberjacks who fit in a Dodge Dakota pickup? Or are we stretching our credibility? The new Dakota SE Club Cab, now available in your neck of the woods. Some people see shaving as something you do for three minutes a day. At Braun, we see it as something you do for a lifetime. And we think you should make the best of it. The Braun Shaver, with its three shaving positions. Designed for those who choose to make a virtue out of necessity. Braun, the world's number one selling foil shaver. Xerox presents the Great American Torture Test. We challenge the bone-numbing cold of northern Alaska. 
and intense city traffic traveled coast to coast to the suffocating heat of Death Valley and passed with flying colors. Xerox, because extreme conditions demand extreme protection. Welcome back, John Saunders along with Dick Vitale. 40 to 34 is the score. The DePaul Blue Demons with a six point lead. And the basketball, David Booth has returned to the game. St. John's has been unable as we look at the scoring leaders, Sealy and Howard, doesn't surprise us. They have not been able, St. John's, to put the pressure on DePaul by taking that lead against them. They maintain that four and six point margin. There's the stack. There's the backdoor, good pass, defensive end. Malik Sealy with good hands. Well, he saw the ball and he saw his man. Played it perfectly like a clinic. Lou Harvey and Chuck Sprawling are the guards now for St. John's. And Sprawling. There's a foul away from the ball. And again, seeing the hammering go up underneath, and the officials aren't going to let it go. Well, they're really coming out of the gate this year to really emphasize post play down inside. B.J. Tyler comes back into the game, as does Kevin Holland. Chucky Murphy gets a break at the point for the fall, and he's done a tremendous job. It's Blue Harvey, the shot won't go. Good rebound by Werdan, and he's fouled as he goes up. Big, strong rebound by Werdan. I really think that Louis Corneseca's got to find a way to get the ball inside a little bit more to Werdan and take advantage of some of his good post moves inside. We're going to see the jumper. Now look at Werdan trying to work on a glass. Nobody bodies up on him. He gets inside Carter position, Wardan. keeps the ball active, gets Two fouled. Shots. You talk about a teammate. I know they're waiting for electricity down at Georgia Tech. Bobby Crimmins has a tremendous perimeter game with Oliver and Scott and Anderson. All Scott's got to do, he lost a lot of weight. Just run the spots, and Anderson will deliver the rock, baby. Scott had 29, Anderson had 22 in the game against the Soviets as Georgia Tech won easily. Hamby tries to get back, does get back in time, but Wurtan is there all over him. Finally knocks the ball loose and Holland will be called for the foul. Wurtan hustled and hustled and finally got a foul called against a DePaul player on him. Kevin Holland was trying to reach for the loose ball where Tan did show some tremendous hustle on that play. That's Holland's fourth, so he goes back to the bench. That could be a big foul because he's been a very important player for DePaul throughout his career. The P.J. Tyler trying to get some minutes now. He knows Murphy played well. Drew Harvey trying to work the baseline, hangs in the air, but can't get it to roll. Dan with another big rebound again, and finally it's Howard that comes away with the ball, but good hustle by Robert Wardan. Well, I think St. John's has to be very pleased with the aggressive style of play out of Wardan. He said, if you're not going to get me the rock, I'm just going to go get it myself. Turning around and letting it fly is Booth. Big bounce, and Sealy comes down with it. Booth has really been quiet in the second half. Harvey, great control of his dribble. Now here's pressure by Tyler. He's got to try to shoot the, the jump shot off the dribble move. See, now they're trying to check him. That's a no-no. You don't want to try to check him one-on-one. -on -one. Ooh, Harvey says, welcome to college, young freshman B.J. Tyler, as he works around him. Well, see, Tyler made a major mistake. Should have played soft on him like Murphy was playing him because he's not looking to shoot the jumper. He comes up on him and allows him to penetrate. Joey Meyer wants a break. 11-10 left, and this is the second half. 40 to 38 is now just down to a two-point game. Back to Madison Square in a moment. For a real fan like me, the greatest games are the games I can replay over and over in my memory. Like 1951, Bobby Thompson's ninth inning homer that won the flag for the Giants. And 1988, Kirk Gibson's clutch ninth inning homer that won the series opener and set the stage for the Dodgers' victory. But all the great games aren't in the past. Lots of great ones are coming up. And one thing's for sure, the Sporting News will be there to bring you everything you need to know. The Sporting News, America's sports authority with the most complete weekly coverage of baseball, football, basketball, and hockey. Call now for the Sporting News at the lowest rate anywhere with convenient delivery right to your door. 
Call 1-800-638-1200 and get 29 issues of the Sporting News for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. You can't get a better deal. Call now 1-800-638-1200. That's 1-800-638-1200. Two teams with big appetites for bowl bids battle on Thanksgiving night. Heisman hopeful Major Harris leads West Virginia against Syracuse in live college football action. Thursday at 8 Eastern on ESPN. The Tennessee Volunteers need a victory against Kentucky to keep their hopes alive for a share of the SEC title. It's college football Saturday at 3.30 Eastern live on ESPN. It's a shame that Lou Carnesecca can't get into the game today. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He's in midseason form. Look at him. He's shaking. He's twisted. 64 years old. God bless him. Look at the love. Look at the love he has for the game. Look at the energy, the enthusiasm, the spirit. Looks like he should be dancing down at the limelight or something here in New York City. Doing a little disco out there. He can shake it, mate. Chucky well, Murphy comes back into the game, and B.J. Tyler, the freshman, goes back to the bench. That's the luxury Joey Meyer has. Seeley hauls down the board. Is now, unlike in the first half, when DePaul was getting second and third chances, they're getting the one shot, and that's it. They go to a one-four set, and then they pop where Dan up as a safety valve. Dan looked along the baseline like he might shoot, decided to pass, but was fouled before he got it away. John, what they really wanted to do, wanted to do there is get in a one four set, put the ball in the hands of Harvey, and allow him to penetrate. And if he beats the guy, and somebody steps out to give help, he just dumps it off for a layup. Zone defense right now by DePaul. First zone of the night. First zone of the night. Boo Harvey wants to get the ball into Robert Rodan, as you were talking about before, but James Hamby keeps taking away the lane. The three-second area is open. If Rodan could slide into an open area, right down in the lane, Sealy up high, and then Rodan pops to the three-second area. See, there's Sealy high. There it is. Rodan around Hamby, but it comes back out to Howard. Booth is left in the game, but he has four fouls on him. James, I know Joey Meyer wants to get him out. James Hamby's done really a solid job coming off the bench. Booth has to be careful not to get number five. Curls. Sealy with the big steal. St. John's is on a 6 to nothing run. That came right after DePaul's 6 to nothing run. And that's why we have a two-point game right now. Ooh, Harvey says, you give it to me, I'm going to shoot it. And that's what they've been looking for all night from Boo. He has to do that a lot more often. He has to think perimeter a little bit because I watched him in practice here earlier tonight. He has a nice rotation, but he wants to drive, drive, and drive. We are tied at 40 with 9.23 left in the game. Foster looks for an opening. Good defense on St. John's. Booth throws it up and gets it to go. That's that hanging in the air the by David Booth. David Mr. Booth is also oh smooth up there. There's the trap that reversed the ball. So you have the luxury also in pressuring. No fear of St. John's pushing for the layup. So you can come out and pressure and just try to break their tempo, break their rhythm to their offense in a half-court game. Drew Harvey open momentarily. Pushes it back out to Malik Sealy. Who dishes it into Singleton, who gets fouled as he goes up, and it's on Hamby. That's a second great pass that Harvey has laid on Singleton, and he's been fouled, but he hasn't gotten the three-point play. Now there's the penetration, and there's the little flip with the left hand, and there goes Singleton, he gets fouled from behind by Hamby. Boy, it looked like Hamby had a lot of his hand on the ball on that one. He came away jumping like he thought there's no way he had committed the foul. Hamby's a graduate already out of college. He has his degree. Sat one year out, red-shirted. Billy Singleton with a chance to tie the game again. Love to see kids have their prior- priorities in order. It's his degree. Still playing basketball, though. He's going to go out to the business world and make a, make a good living for himself. You see the black 
You know what that's for, don't you? Katha Quinn. Yes. Unbelievable. She was a superstar at St. John's. You talk about love, the sports information director who passed last year. She had such great love for St. John's program, and Louis Karnaseka absolutely loved the young lady. Louis would be the first to admit she was as much a part of Redmond basketball as he is. She used to get on my case if I didn't say something positive about Mark Jackson or pick him as an All-American. She loves St. John's. Swinging it side to side. Howard, See, you gotta hit that shot. Two-man basketball, inside, outside. Reaching in was Chucky Sprawling. As Howard took it into the paint, Sprawling just casually reached in. A reminder for everyone to stay with ESPN here on Sunday, 8 Eastern time, the Los Angeles Rams and New Orleans Saints in a key NFC West battle. Of course, both those teams chasing the San Francisco 49ers. That's Sunday here on ESPN. Mail, mail. Murphy lobs it in to Howard. Very similar style, both clubs. Hamby pushes it back out. Melvon Foster hangs in the air but misses the shot. Big rebound by Foster as he follows up his own shot, but he's charged for the offensive foul. They're getting the wide open jump shot once the ball goes down into the post with that inside outside action. You enter it inside, kick it back out, but it's not falling down. Joey Meyer was one heck of a guard when he played at the ball. He put on some great numbers. Well, he got a little special treatment, didn't he? I think he knew the uh -huh. coach pretty well. There goes the zone defense right now. Singleton on Howard. One, two, two set. Ooh, Harvey, uh, another good dish to Singleton. This time he gets it. St. John's has the lead. It's 43-42. Their first lead since 15-14. That's the third time he delivered him the ball. And if he didn't score that time, he was going the other way. He split the gap of that zone. St. John's lead is won. Chucky Murphy tries to take care of that, but can't. He really is like their fourth option or fifth option offensively. The perimeter jump shot out of Murphy. Curtis Price with a bad hand is not likely to shoot from out there. Foster, again is long. The ball is not a great shooting team. But they are acrobats. That's a horse inside. They got to be able to reverse the ball and try to dump it to Howard. They are not, as you just mentioned, a good perimeter shooting team. We've got a good one here with 6.41 left. St. John's Redmond trail the Blue Demons of DePaul by just one. There's the zone defense. The zones have gaps and seams. Seeley thinks about it and decides to go to the baseline. Drew Harvey from the top of the key bangs it down. He has really a good 15-foot jump shot, John. He has good rotation. He's just very hesitant to consistently shoot the ball from the outside. Well, the two times he's decided to shoot it from the outside, in this half, he's hit it. Boo Harvey has 10 points in this half. And Harvey is called as he nearly strips the ball away from Stephen Howard, but Boo Harvey picks up his fourth foul. That was red. Three. One in. No. Three. Isn't that his fourth? Or is that his? I thought it's his fourth. And St. John's has. I believe it was his fourth as well. Who Harvey just reaching in. It is his fourth foul. Who Harvey hauling and Brooke for DePaul already with four. Who has four, but they leave him in the game. I don't think Louie realizes he has four because the PA announcer said three. Well, his assistant coaches should be charting That's on the right. sideline, and he has some good ones in Al Lababo and Ronnie Rutledge. What a shot by Howard. See, that's intelligent play. That's going to option number one. That's going to our key guy getting the ball in the hands of the right player. He may just feel, though, John, with less than six minutes to go in the game, I can't take a chance with him on the sideline. That's a tough call by a coach. He has some pretty good ball handlers on the sidelines, but you're right. He is hot in this half. He has ten points already. Tried to force that pass between Booth and Howard and couldn't pull it off. Chucky Murphy back the other way is short. Howard reaching over the back of where Dan doesn't get the ball and it rolls out of bounds. St. John's ball. 
I agree with Luke Honeseka right now. Leave Harvey on the floor. You have experience out there. He's just got to be able to play defense a little bit softer. He doesn't have to really pressure Murphy. Too much inexperience on that bench. Malik Seeley open for three, but he misses it by a mile. See, he can guard him right here, Murphy, and not fear him shooting the ball from deep. He's got to be careful of the dump foul where he reaches in. Two of his fouls came of the offensive variety. So Murphy wants the ball against him. He knows he has four, and he wants the ball and challenge him. Foster tries to go baseline, but Robert Wardan was there blocking his path, and the ball rolls out of bounds. Wardan did a great job in closing off the driving lane. He gave tremendous help defensively. The term we utilize there is hedging, stepping out. And then Foster realized Wardan had position. He had to pull up. And that's when he lost the ball. Here's that zone defense. See, he should try to drive the ball into the gap of that zone. Make two people play it. Oh, a nice pass by Wardan into Singleton, and he misses the easy two. Now that's where they miss Jason Williams. Jason Williams is an automatic conversion there, and also probably would have gotten fouled on a play. Great look by Wardan. Oh, Howard with a nice drive in the lane, but the ball won't fall. Booth tries to go with a jump hook, and it does. David Booth gets the jump hook, but he has to be very careful of that free arm that he tries to protect the other, protects the ball with. Doesn't want to get caught with the offenses as well. There's the defense of DePaul. Now it's a 2-3 set. Now it's a 2-3 set. It changes the complexion of it with the movement of the ball. Scrolling along the baseline, it won't go. Seeley just misses the rebound. Chucky Murphy comes down on the break, tries to dish it off, but Seeley was back to grab it away. Four on one, should have utilized the bounce pass. There's Wardan, goes in and lays it in. We're down to a one point game again. That's the kind of game Harvey loves to play. Run, baby, run. Wardan shows he can get up the floor. 48 47, DePaul with the lead. They've had it for most of the game. 3.15 left. Holland with his back, and it's stripped loose by Singleton. We've got a great one here at Madison Square Garden. Stay with us. The first of two in the Dodge NIT semifinals. Back in a moment. Howard with 14 of the 21 points, eight boards as well. That's amazing that they're really hanging right here in the game, turning it over 18 times. The lead has changed four times in the last four minutes, so it's a thrill a minute here at Madison Square Garden. That's a high number to turn it over, John, when you consider we don't have a fast-paced tempo game. David Booth wants to go down the lane. It's blocked his path. Shot won't go. Bounces around, and Booth nearly comes up with it, but Seeley finds Boo Harvey. Little foul situation St. John's is in the bonus they will go to the line the ball will not go to the line St. John's has two to give Paul has three timeouts St. John's two they give Murphy a break and put Melvon Foster on Boo Harvey nice pass to Seeley but the shot won't go but Singleton is there Ball is turned over to the Blue Demons. Singleton can't seem to get a break, but he hustles, he scraps. He's a real solid role player, and he's getting valuable minutes now that should help him later on when Jason Williams gets back. Scrolling went for the steal, but can't get the ball. It'll still be DePaul's ball. Two seventeen left, 48 to 47. The Blue Demons lead. Holland has it tipped away by Wardan, but Booth is there. Harvey playing soft again at the point. They allow him to swing the ball side to side. If you swing it three or four times, you're eventually going to get somebody free. It's easy to play the first pass, but very difficult to play the third, fourth, and fifth. Holland picks up the nice pass from Howard, gets him up in the air, and hits the shot. The H&H &H gang, Howard and Holland inside. Power. They have really excellent power players down in the low decks. I hear they can rotate back out of the zone. They're going to man to man. Foster, good defensive player playing Harvey. Malik Seeley looks for the opening. Finds Singleton, who's there, and this time he gets the roll. Good things happen to people that really work hard. He has excellent work ethic. He's been working all night, and the ball just hasn't bounced his way. 
bounced his way that time, and it's back to a one-point game. Booth wants the shot, gets Sealy up in the air, then pushes it to the side. These are the kind of games that give you a great season, John. If you can win the close games, that gives you the big numbers throughout the year. 3-0 is a heck of a lot better than 2-1 and one out of the gate. And a man defense. Holland finds Booth. Booth has the glass but can't get it. Holland is fouled by Werdan from behind. Holland really working the glass, but excellent execution by DePaul. Getting the ball in the hands of their number one option, David Booth. There's the kick out back to Booth. He's a slashing player, a driver. Now here's where they really excel, on the offensive boards. And there's the inside position, pushed by Werdan, number 41. That's number four on Robert Werdan. We're down under a minute left. The timeout is called. 49.8 seconds left in the game. It's 50 to 49 to Paul Leeds. And then he seals off the defensive player with his body, squares it to the baseline, converts it hollow with an excellent job posting, drop stepping, and sealing off the defensive player. Holland hasn't been to the line tonight. 59% over his career, and with 49 plus seconds left, we remind you that the point eight seconds is from the NBA in the last minute of quarters they will run down the seconds in tenths of a second and here at Madison Square Garden with a Knicks play that's how they'll have it for St. John's games as well that leaves no doubt at all as to how much time is left many times you don't know if it's point eight or point one it comes up with a big free throw right there this is even bigger right now makes him have to go for the Trifecta. It's a three-point game. Sprolling's a potential three-point shooter. If they score quickly and go for the deuce, they don't have to think three. Right well, there. Harvey hits it and gets it back to one with 35 seconds left. That's a good move by Harvey. A quick, easy move inside. The ball does not have to shoot the ball. The shot clock is off. And they want a timeout. Joey Meyer wants to talk about things with 23.2 seconds left. If you're Joey Meyer, what are you telling your kids right now? Win. Let's get to the locker room with a W and win. <laughs> now, right now, he meets with his coaching staff. You don't really have to be a scientist right now, John. They got to protect the basketball, anticipate the foul, go to the free throw line, make the free throw, make it count. Louis Carnesecca on the other side. He's got to get his people to play really tough defense, try to create the turnover. If they don't, they're going to have to foul, but make sure that they don't commit the intentional foul, which is two shots plus the ball. And remember, I said earlier, one of the points of emphasis this year is going to be call the intentional foul rather than just allow the guy to go to that line and shoot the one-on-one -on -one as opposed to the two and get the ball. Yes, but will they call it? How many times do we see them get hacked and the guy's arm is lying on the floor and they still call the one and one instead of the intention. The ball 38-0 when holding opponents under 60 points under Joey Meyer. And right now, St. John's is 51, well below that 60-point mark. Well, it's been an outstanding game in terms of competitiveness, but not really in performance and in play. The shooting's been very, very questionable. Right now, when you're... You're St. John's, you got to think right now, who are you going to put pressure on? You know, Murphy and Foster are not great shooters. And a reminder, Boo Harvey has the four fouls on They're him, gonna so spread he's the not going to be the guy you're going to want to commit it. Got to be careful of the intentional. Oh, they spread the court really nice, using a lot of time. They're spreading the court. Eight seconds. A little bit too late, St. John's. There's the foul. Now, is that intentional? They didn't call it intentional. I didn't see the hands go up in the cross. See, that's the question mark. The rule says if you're directly playing the ball, it is not intentional. Louie wants a timeout to talk about this. Five plus seconds left. 52-51. DePaul has the lead back with the exciting finish in a moment. Free throw line, so with five plus seconds left, still some work for St. John's. Well, a little confusion right there, but they only have five fouls, St. John's. Was confusion whether it was six. They still have them. St. John's got the ball. I missed that call down in that corner. Traveling call, they call. They didn't call the foul. Watch them set a back screen maybe for Sealy, break into the basket. I'm going to take a look at the way they're lining up. They got a traveling down there instead of a foul. 
Joey Meyer is walking out onto the court. Wait. Well, he's meeting with his coaching staff. What happened, they called a traveling violation as opposed to the foul. That's why there was confusion as to how many were up there when you thought there should have been six. It was only five, but they called the traveling. Anyway, now you got to get to St. John's. They have the basketball. One thing they were looking at potentially there was setting a screen, a rear screen, and sprinting Sealy to the basket to throw the lob over the top. Let's take a look at it again. Our view was... St. John obstructed from where See, they we get a travel here. way in that corner. Right oh, there's there, the walk. Right yeah, there. see, they didn't get the foul there. They had the walk prior. The walk prior. Good job by our people. Early in the season, jumping on it when rustiness prevails. But right now, the ball has to be very careful, very careful of a screen. A lot of teams in this situation would put some pressure defensively to make them take time, but not not react to the screen, almost like zone. If they throw the ball over the top, your back people can attack the ball. Just about six seconds, it says 5-7, but we'll call it closer to six. Is a lot of time to get the ball to oh, the ball. A lot of time to get a score, especially if they get it in Harvey's hands, he could break the defense down and go right through the defense. I mean, you could estimate from where he is, they could score there in like 2.2 seconds if he just touches the ball there and blows to the goal. They want to shoot at long range. Chuck is scrolling, who will inbound the ball. He's a great long range shooter. Sealy has some touch out there as well. They go to a 1 4 set. Now Sealy releases. Oh, they get it to Harvey. He's going to split the defense. He's got time. He's got time. He hits He's it. it. He hits it. Cool. Harvey wins the game for the St. John's Redmen at the buzzer. Perfectly, Dick. Well, they get the ball into Harvey's hands. They run a little screen by Sealy. Sealy sets a screen for his friend, releases, and Harvey has plenty of time. He could score in 0.2 seconds with that situation. Takes it one on one. He loves it, just like at the playground. Count it, baby. NBN, nothing but nylon. And Louis Corner second says, Look, baby, go down. Go down. Please give me a nice Thanksgiving present. And he goes, Just like I designed it. <laughs> Louis Karnasek has reason to celebrate. You see Boo Harvey on the ground as the celebration starts. Boo Harvey with 14 points in the second half, 16 overall. The NIT committee celebrating too. Having St. John's in the final, the Dodge committee is jumping with jubilation. Saints go now.